So, hi, I'm uh, Pierre-Luc Baudouin. I work for Collabra. Uh, I've been working for Collabra for over a year on the browser theme, where we contribute to WebKit GDK, Qt WebKit, and recently we contributed to Mozilla. So, today I'm going to entertain you about how to contribute to WebKit. But, uh, here's the plan of the session. I'm going to talk to you about uh, what is WebKit exactly. Um, what is this, the project's history, uh, how it's designed, and uh, how the project is organized. So first of all, what is WebKit? So unlike the icon suggests, it's not a compass in a box. It's a web rendering engine. So what is a web rendering engine? It's an engine that will uh, download the content, render it, uh, lay, lay it out, uh, decide the styling, uh, execute the JavaScript and uh, manage the history, but it's not a browser. So uh, you won't find high-level features in WebKit, such as uh, password manager or uh, history searching. This is all implemented in the browser. So WebKit was started uh, years ago as KHTML. Uh, it was developed by Q KDE. Um, developers and Apple decided to use it to create WebKit and uh, to create Safari from it. Uh, in 2005, Apple decided to make um, an open source project with it, and so they opened their SVN to the public and they created a public Bugzilla, and all the developers now are on IRC. Um, Lay from that open code base, uh, Kitty WebKit was developed in starting in, two in 2006, and WebKit GDK started in July 2007. WebKit, uh, if you get the repository of WebKit, you'll get uh, this. You'll get JavaScript core, web core, and the WebKit folder, which contains the uh, specific port API. And I'm going to go over each uh, section now. Uh, JavaScript core, as the name states, is the JavaScript uh, interpreter. It's exactly the same interpreter for every port. Uh, the, the code is uh, non-platform specific. And if so, it's uh, hidden. I, never I never needed to touch it as a WebKit GTK developer, as Apple makes it work for us. Uh, the latest one is based on Squirrel Fish Extreme, which is uh, this mascot here. Uh, it's quite fast. Uh, need I to go through the statistics? I mean, uh, it's they s Apple say it's 62 times faster than with the previous one. But then, once you're 30 times faster than the previous generation, it doesn't matter much more. You can find the statistics on the blog, on the WebKit blog, if you want. Uh, WebCore is responsible for the layout, the styling, the network logic, but uh, yeah, the, there's some platform generic, not not platform generic, but platform specific code uh, in WebCore, and uh, the code is all in different objects, so it's rather easy to read. Uh, it's not all if defs for each platforms, although some classes are still uh, like that. And it's sim the, the design is simple. Uh, I'll go over that later. WebCore is uh, st web standard compliant. Uh, that means that uh, it was one of the first browser engine to pass the AC3 test. Um, it supports AC2, of course. Uh, it supports uh, NP API plugins. And this is one of the contributions that Collabra uh, gave to WebKit GDK and Qt WebKit. Uh, we implemented the uh, support for uh, Flash plugin, for instance. So uh, we're proud of that. Um, WebCore uh, supports CSS transition, which is a proposition made by the uh, Apple developers. The, um, this proposition is a way to make uh, simple animations with one line of CSS. For instance, if you want to have a fade out, an object that fades out when you over it, uh, it's one line of CSS. You just need to state the next CSS style and how long is the transition. 
So I hope this transition will be implemented by other browsers, but it could, be, it could prove to be hard to implement since w we've tried at least on Mozilla, it took us months. But anyway, um, and the uh, web core is well tested uh, through layout tests, which I'll cover later too. Finally, uh, the third rectangle we had was uh, the WebKit directory, which contains the port-specific code. Uh, in this directory, you'll find uh, the public API for each of the ports. Uh, you'll find uh, the network logic, you'll find uh, the rendering, and you'll find input methods and the history. The history is there for historic reasons, uh, because uh, when before WebKit was open sourced, uh, the history was put in that part because that part was closed source, and um, so now nowadays we we should move that part back in the cores for all ports to share, but that, that's a uh, that's on the to do list. Uh, one interesting thing here is that each port used its own build system, so you won't feel uh, you will feel at home uh, using Auto Tools if you're a GTK developer or QMake if you're a QT developer. So let's go over the features of uh, the two ports that interest us today, uh, Qt WebKit and WebKit JDK. Qt WebKit is shipped with Qt uh, since 4.4. It, it didn't have supports for the NP API plugins back then, uh, but it should be available in 4.5, which will be LGPL as it has been announced last week. Uh, it's well integrated into the, the API, so uh, it's you can use it as any other widget. So quite easy to use. WebKit GDK, on the other hand, uh, uses the GNOME stack of libraries. Uh, you have the choice. You have the choice of libsoup or libcurl for the network backend. You have uh, Cairo for drawing and Pengo for the text rendering. Uh, it doesn't have support for history yet. Uh, either we'll wait for the core to have it, or we'll have to implement it by ourselves. Uh, and unfortunately, it has limited uh, functionality. So WebKit GTK is wonderful if you want to write an, uh, an application to render HTML, such as DevHelp or Help Yelp, the Help Browser. But it will prove limited in functionality if you want to write a full-fledged browser. For instance, until I think a month ago, it didn't support uh, pop-up blocking or downloading files yet. So it's not ready yet for a browser. But uh, people have been trying. Uh, the latest, the head of SVN for Epiphany uses WebKit. And there's a Midori, which is another WebKit-based uh, GTK browser. So let's go over uh, what's missing. I think I covered a bit of that. Um, Qt WebKit could use a faster uh, canvas rendering. Uh, the WebKit JDK one is quite faster. Um, both port could use a DOM API. A DOM API is something that will help you interact with the JavaScript uh, and uh, all the object inside the uh, the uh, page through your C application or your C++ application. So for instance, if you want to implement um, a password manager, you would need such API. And uh, it's being worked on for both, so help is needed. Um, yeah, and uh, there's some missing, missing important features such as K cache, long-term cookies, and history for the uh, WebKit GTK port. So, how do you use these interior applications? If you're writing a Qt application, you just create a Q web view, which is a Q widget, and then you load a web page using the load method. It's quite simple. Almost the same for WebKit GTK, but it's a WebKit WebView uh, GTK widget. And uh, you open a URI, and then you get the extra ex execute script, which will allow you to interact with the JavaScript insert inside your page. But you can't read da data back from it, so it's one way only. So this gives you an overview of uh, what is WebKit. Let's go over what to expect if when you open the code. You'll get clean code. Uh, the process, which I'll cover later, impose a pair review for everything that goes into WebKit. So that means that 
uh, the code is pretty consistent with itself. Uh, no changes of uh, direction in the middle, or n if and everyone agrees on how to uh, how it should be it should be implemented. Uh, you get a modern code base, so you'll, uh, for instance, the code uses no namespaces, which is quite useful to make uh, meaningful uh, class object class names. Also, um, you get a simple architecture, as uh, I'll cover later. Uh, the designers decided to reuse almost always the same design patterns to make it simple to understand. So you, they don't, they're not reinventing the wheel for each uh, problem. And you'll get helpful, helpful people. Uh, if you go on IRC, uh, there's always somebody ready to help you. So let's go over the most used design pattern inside WebKit, which is the delegate design pattern. This pattern is a way to uh, delegate decisions to an, aggre an aggregated object. So if you have a complex, if you have decisions that needs to be done, you can delegate this decision to another object, which could be platform specific. For instance, if we have a frame which contains a page, and if you click on the link, the link, uh, the frame delegate will react to that clicking and will ask the frame delegate client, what should I do? And it will ask the embedding application, is the user allowed to visit a, another web page or should I download the file? And then the frame delegate client will send back the answer to the delegate, which will act upon it. So it's quite a useful design pattern, I think, making the uh, platform-specific code elsewhere. Let's go um, over how you can help. Um, there are many areas of contribution you can help. There's uh, testing, uh, where you can download the nightly builds and test it against your most visited website and see if something breaks. Uh, there are still some website that doesn't work quite well. Uh, there's a specific category of bugs in the bugzilla for that called evangelism, because uh, you often see if the browser is, is Safari, then say we don't support it, where the page is actually rendering well. It's just that the, bra the designer decided to exclude the Safari browser. And uh, so yeah, if you test it, it, it's lo it, it helps a lot. Of course, contributing code, con code is the best way to help because you're directly helping the project. Um, contributing tests, um, there's the Lyle tests, which are done using the dump render tree. This tool dumps the render tree and compares it with previous builds uh, where you, um, so when you dump the render tree, you get the rendering, the rendering that should be done. And if it differs from the previous version, that means there's something, something broke. Therefore, we can uh, very soon in the process, we can detect if uh, something broke. Also, uh, contributing documentation is always uh, interesting because uh, WebKit GDK is missing a lot of uh, documentation uh, currently. Now let's go over the process uh, that WebKit Enforce. Um, first, you should create a bug or f find a bug that you need to fix. Uh, then you assign it to you, and then um, you work on it, of course. And once you have a fix, uh, you should submit it on the Bugzilla as a patch. And uh, that's where the process gets a bit complex. Uh, you should set the review flag, the question mark review flag, on your patch. And that will mark your patch as needs to be reviewed and a uh, reviewer would get an email and then uh, we'll review it as soon as possible. And uh, if your work is good, it'll mark it with a plus, and if it's wrong, it will be marked with a minus. Uh, so once you got a plus, uh, your code is ready to be merged, which will be done by a committer. So this process highlights different rows, which I'll cover here. Uh, you can be a contributor, a Bugzilla helper, a committer, or a viewer. A contributor is anyone contributing to the project. A Bugzilla helper is somebody that helped l enough to get um, rights on the Bugzilla. So you can help with the bug, the bug triage or the uh, finding duplicate bugs. 
once you uh, help it enough, uh, you'll be invited to become a committer. A committer uh, is somebody that can commit to the SVN any patches that got a plus review. And finally, a reviewer is somebody that uh, can give a review of plus or minus. A reviewer is uh, can the reviewer can only be invited or not invited, but the reviewers decide who is going to be the next reviewer. So uh, you get invited to be a reviewer. And as it's written here, uh, you have to submit a fair amount of patches before you're invited to become one. So who are the reviewers and committers in WebKit? Uh, it's mostly empl Apple employees. Uh, they are the driving force of the project. They are rewriting what needs to be re rewritten and refactoring if needed. For instance, they, uh, they provided the JavaScript uh, improvements. The, you, can, you will also find Google employees, which are working on Google Chrome. Uh, you will find Qt software employees, which work on the Qt port. And you will find a lot of other contributors, which are working on different ports and submitted enough work to uh, become a, a reviewer. So from that, uh, where to start? Uh, join us on IRC. Uh, you can find bugs on the bugs lab. You can find a uh, mailing list on the website. And uh, there's a planet where many blogs are aggregated. And uh, of course, don't hesitate to, have to ask questions, because we're here to help you. Would you have any today? There's uh, at least 50 person working on uh, uh, WebKit. And a good part of them are Apple employees. So the question was how many employee how many person are actively participating to the project? <laughs> Other questions? Yes? Uh, Maidori is one of the first that has been created uh, to use WebKit JDK. Uh, Aurora started as the uh, Qt uh, the Qt launcher that we use to debug, and then they built a complete uh, demonstration for it. And later, it, it became a real browser because it's feature complete. So it's uh, its own project now. their own web. Yeah, if you want to test, test these, uh, you have to either get them from the, get the code repository. <coughs> yeah, they're the most complete. These are the three most complete browser for WebKit. Is that yeah, that's a problem. WebKit GDK doesn't have lots of release. So you have a. Uh, <laughs> so your question was. Uh, WebKit GDK um, suffered from uh, some sort of API freeze. So for a long time, uh, nobody uh, wanted to break the API. Uh, and now there's a reviewer that has been contributing more work, and uh, there should be changes to the API, which will help Midori to improve. But I can't comment on the uh, how s frequent should be the, um, the releases. Because it's, m let's say it's missing leadership right now. Other questions? How much work Google? OK. How much work did Google contribute upstream? Um, I didn't check, uh, really. But I think they've been contributing a lot because uh, their Google Chrome employees have been there for a good year, <laughs> or maybe two even. Because um, 
one interesting fact is when Google Chrome has been announced, they submitted a patch to the uh, SVN, to the WebKit code, which was actually changing all the change logs because they had been using fake names for over two years. And then uh, they use the real names in the change log now. So they've been contributing for a long time. It was just hidden. <laughs> so quite funny, yeah. But so uh, I was wondering, who is this guy who appears to know everything in WebKit, but as, like, is completely anonymous, like uh, at webkit.org uh, email address. But now they use uh, Google Chrome or Google uh, .com addresses. So yeah, they, they did contribute a lot. Uh, improving WebKit or maybe making changes they needed for their their use. Yes. As on. Okay, so the question is, is there any tension between the Apple developers and, well, I mean, between the developers because uh, they seem to have the old of the project? Uh, I'd say no, because uh, everything is open. Uh, I mean, the bugs is there, the, the community is there. The, we, we all work together to, <coughs> to make it better. I, if Apple makes a change, they'll make sure that the other builds, the other ports still builds. So I think, it's no, we, I, didn't, I haven't seen any animosity or I think we work together. Yes? Uh, no, no, they, every day there are comments and it's, it's incremental and it's no, they're, they, they're not um, dumping changes that, will, that breaks everything. Uh, but I mean, they, no, uh, sure, but they're not, they don't, uh, we, we are in not, we s we can see things coming like it's not uh, if they're although I didn't see the uh, the squirrel fish extreme come but they did everything so that everything works after that. Would you like to comment? Yeah, I was going to say that also half of the people working for Apple on uh, web WebKit are uh, active in open source. They were working for Cydia and other uh, companies, so they actually care about the GK one, and they seem willing to to leave more code. So for now, they are doing most of the work, so they are the part of the project. So yeah, the Apple employees are former open source contributors. <laughs> so they are very interesting that they, are, they have interest that the other ports work. Other questions? Yes? Um, I feel like the state of HTML5 video is supporting the Do you mean the HTML5 video? Okay. Um, I would have to check. Uh, the question is, uh, how what is the sup um, sorry, what is the status of HTML5 video support in WebKit? Uh, it works perfectly in the p Mac port because they've written the support, of course, uh, using Q QuickTime. Uh, I act a bit on the WebKit GTK part. It uses GStreamer as a back end. Uh, it needs love. Uh, let's be uh, fair with it. Uh, you get probably five frames a second right now, and some websites won't play at all. So uh, I think I'm, I'm unaware if Kitty WebKit has anything to support it. But uh, the code is there. the 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 engine is ready to uh, to get some love to support it more. Because I mean, the classes and everything, the support is there. It's just that the port doesn't implement it, implement what it's needed. <coughs> Other questions? Well, thank you for listening. <laughs>